on a personal level, this 13th harmonic week, it's it's a week to focus on purpose, your destiny, how you want to live, and what you're chosen for. The 13th harmonic recognizes that it is chosen for something. It's chosen. Only it can execute a given path. Hi, everyone. My name is Laura. I'm the director of fulfillment here at Astrology Hub, and we're gearing up for something so special. The Health, Wealth, and Fulfillment Workshop Series featuring world-class astrologers Georgia Stathis, Judith Hill, and Michael Bryan. Combined, these teachers have over a 100 years of experience. If you'd like to join as a student and learn some of the most hands-on techniques for bringing more health, wealth, and fulfillment into your life, join us at the waitlist at astrologyhub.com slash workshop waitlist. Hope to see you there. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to your weekly astrological weather. I am so grateful that you have decided to join us here today. And we are talking about the astrology for the week of August 7th through the 13th with harmonic astrologer Clarissa Dolphin. Clarissa is also one of our incredible astrologers on our Astrologer Connect reading platform. And if you are new to the channel, welcome. You've just joined a worldwide astrological conversation that is happening here every single week where we are tuning into the astrological tides. And the astrological tides are really like the tides of the ocean. There's the ebbs and the flows, the ups and the downs, the days where we have big waves and where we have smaller waves. And so knowing what the tides are doing enables us to show up prepared to make decisions that are informed by not only what's happening in our life, but also where the energies are supportive. So I'm really grateful that you're here to have this conversation with us. And before we get rolling, please make sure you hit subscribe wherever you're listening to the podcast so that you don't miss any episodes. Also, one ask that I have and one way that you can help support this podcast is that by wherever you're listening to us, that you give it five stars and that you write a written review. This enables us to get the podcast out to more people. Thank you for everyone who has already done this. And thank you for those of you who are doing that right now. With all that said, let's dive in. Let's go down that astrological rabbit hole together and tune into the weather for this week. Clarissa, welcome to the show. Thank you, as always, for having me, Amanda. It's a pleasure and a privilege. And I love this week. <laughs> right. Tell us why. Why are you saying that you love this week? Well, this week is really highly romantic. It's filled with a lot of surprises. There's a lot of singular, one of a lifetime, totally unique events that are going to go down this week. That's why I love it. Okay. With that said, what would you say is the overarching theme for the week? There are a few. So I'm going to give a quick list of the o overall theme. So like I said just a moment ago, once in a lifetime events, unique singular incident, uh, lots of high romance, high inspiration this week. This is like an aesthetic and romantic gold mine. Uh, a lot of faded connections, questing. Very soulful and profound week. It's not shallow, it's not surface. It's not just like blah, blah, blah. It's like deep. Revolutionary figureheads, just figureheads in general. So heroes and anti-heroes. It's a very personality dominant week. So it's going to be like, dang, this person is a trip. All these, all these characters are, are coming out. There's a lot of religious and spiritual themes as well. Uh, it, it, it's like a bizarro world in some sense. But so there's there's going to be welcome bizarro world and then straight up just circus bizarro world. So those are the main themes. Uh, I love when astrologers like boldly make claims because one of the criticisms of, of astrology can be that, oh, they're just saying like vague things that could like relate to anyone or anything. But one of the things I love about you, Clarissa, you get really specific. And so something that you're saying here, singular incidents and once in a lifetime events are happening this week. Tell us why you're saying that. 
Oh, you just every time I talk to you, Amanda, I just get full body chill. Why am I saying that? It's because this week is a 13th harmonic dominant week. In previous podcasts with you, there have been kind of more of a mix, like a hodgepodge of different kind of energies. This one, pretty much every aspect and every single day, you can just see the list of 13, 13, 13, 13. And 13th harmonic is singularity. It is the, the concept in the universe that everything is unique. I think generally as humans, just my opinion, a lot of humans, we like to categorize things. Women are like this. People are like that, et cetera, et cetera. The 13th harmonic is the energy in the universe that speaks to the reality of everything being unique. So that's, that's behind that. Oh. I love that. Okay. So you're also saying that this is an aesthetic gold mine, that there are faded directions, that there's high inspiration, high romance. Where is that all coming from? That's coming from the harmonics of the peak aspects. So let me give you the peak aspects of the week. There are only three, actually. There are no ingresses this week. There is nothing major. We're in between moons, meaning we're in between a full moon and a new moon. So let me give you the aspects. Transit to transit. On Wednesday, that's going to be one of the biggest days of the week. We've got Venus retrograde is square Uranus. That same day, Wednesday the 9th, we've got Mercury trying Jupiter. And then the final transit to transit aspect that most astrologers are going to be talking about this week is uh, Sun conjunct Venus retrograde on Sunday, August 13th. So all of these aspects, if you look at the hidden dimensions of them, which are harmonics, they all have all kinds of Venus interplay. So it's actually a Venus, in terms of planetary energy, it's a Venus dominant week in all of the harmonics. And so this high romance energy is really being triggered, particularly on Wednesday, uh, with all these welcome surprises, all these like aesthetic, beautiful things that are highly inspiring. So let's just break down Venus Uranus on Venus square Uranus on Wednesday. Venus Uranus as an energetic planetary pair translates directly to sex, music, dance, and energy healing. So just the nature, and people will be talking about the square creating aggravation. The square certainly could do that because the square generates action. So the square is, it's like, it gets aggravated so that it acts, so that it moves, et cetera. So when when we have Venus square Uranus, we've got a lot of very deeply, like, imagine, imagine music romance coursing through your body imagine you know this this kind of this impetus that titillates all of your senses to the maximum it, like when you fall in love like when you're deeply inspired by an artistic work something deeply created and beautiful that feeling of being alive that's gonna be the main uh energy that's coursing through everything this week Wow. So for people who have projects that they're working on or creative endeavors or they're looking for partnership, it sounds like the circumstances are going to be very supportive of being in kind of I've been I've been reading this book, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, and she's talking a lot about that, the creative impulse of the universe and how when when we as humans can tap into that, how invigorating, invigorating it is. It was like, it is like we're riding a wave of creative inspiration. And, uh, and those are the times often where we feel the most alive. We feel vital. So that's what I'm hearing from you, that this week is going to be really conducive to those types of, of creative, inspired actions in our life. One million percent, Amanda. And I think in a way that actually could be so inspiring because it comes out of the blue. I don't think a lot of people are going to see this coming necessarily. It's almost like this this energetic gift from the universe. It's like, oh, like, thank you. Thank you for reminding me that I could feel this way about this creative project. 
I wrote literally in my notes, great for creative projects, things that require aesthetic or taste. And it's, it could be, we're also in retrograde season though with Venus, right? So Venus retrograde is, is happening at this point. And so this could be stuff, these could be relics from the past that you haven't been doing or things that you used to love and enjoy that suddenly it's like, oh my God, I have a penchant for this again. Like it, it, things become alive and reinvigorated to our surprise. Ooh, that's exciting. And, yeah. and again, it's, it's not something that we hear every week. So th- just, just pay attention to the opportunity. And it seems like even though we might be surprised and delighted by where it comes from, knowing that it is a week that's conducive to that can help us look for it in our lives and be ready for it and, and even maybe create space for it, right? Absolutely. Because if I'm honest with you, one of my most loathed retro- retrogrades is Venus retrograde because it's like, oh my God, things are blah, Venus isn't direct, et cetera, et cetera. So as an interpreter and just a human being, you know, at preparing this rapport, I didn't, I didn't expect this. It's not like I expected things to be blah. Totally not. It's mm. totally not that this week. It's beautiful. Mm. Okay. So we have, we have a 13 pi harmonic, which is some of these really faded, unique kind of incidents happening. And then we have this Venus dominant week where we have this other kind of more creative romantic energy going for people that are new and they don't know what harmonics are. Yes. You you mentioned it kind of like the unseen behind the 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 astrological aspects. Can you just give us like in a nutshell, this is what harmonics are. Yes. Yeah, so in a nutshell, harmonics are actually aspects. So it's it's easier shown than said, but let me break it down to you. Let's just imagine that we have a chart in front of us and we're looking at a grand trine. So a, a trine aspect segments the chart in three ways, it cuts it up thrice. It is the third harmonic, a square aspect that creates a square it cuts it up four ways. It is the fourth harmonic. In harmonic astrology, we can go infinite numbers. We can go to a million. So we can literally cut this, uh, the chart up a million different ways if we wanted to. So when I'm talking about the 13th harmonic, imagine an ask that cuts that 360 degree number 13 way. That would be the 13th harmonic aspect. So it's all the, it's basically like the entire infinite universe in the 360 degree wheel, which is also representative of infinity. You can cut it up. And so these harmonics are like parallel dimensions to our reality that create our reality. Does that explain it a little bit? Yes, I, I've asked you that question so many times and every way you, you explain it a little bit different and every time I get something a little bit more. So thank you for that, Clarissa. And I'm sure that, that the audience has, especially those who've been tuning into your weekly weather transmission, I'm sure that they're like, oh, well, that's, that's a new way of thinking about it. And I love thinking too about how energy precedes form. Like everything mm. that we see in form was at one, one time energy. And so harmonics are getting to the energy behind form or the energy behind life here on earth that's creating what we experience and what we see and who we are and all those things. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I'm glad I got a box of tissue here so I can joy cry because that's absolutely one million percent here. Okay. Hey, can you walk mm-hmm. us through the days and help us get a sense for how the energies will play out from day to day? So the weather for Monday, there's not like a transit to transit aspect. Like I shared earlier, there's only three this week. There's no new moons. There's no ingresses or nothing. Um, but harmonically on Monday, we've got Sun Pluto and Sun Saturn active in the 11 and the 9. So this is when leadership comes to fore. Sun Pluto is power. It's personal power. So Sun Pluto is the type of energy and a, a type of individual that when a Sun Pluto person walks into the room, everybody looks at it. Everybody looks at the per. It's like it like sucks in your intent uh, attention. So basically, with this, it's like in the eleventh harmonic, we've got the type of okay, act fast, act now. 
uh, powerful progressive leadership. And then sun sat. And so I think on Monday to, to with, with these energies, we might be faced with having to make a very fast decision about how we're going to be and how we're going to act that moves, moves things along. So that goes to the higher theme of the week, which is figureheads, leadership. That, that's really dynamic today. So Tuesday is, we also don't have a transit to transit thing, but the harmonics are lit. They're actually even more lit than Monday. The, the Tuesday is like a busy, fast, explosive bender type of energy. So it's the type of thing where it's like, we've got Mars-Pluto 11th harmonic. The Mars-Pluto is the type of energy where it's like, okay, I've been up working every single day for 30 days to get this thing done. That's going to be super active. We've also got Sun, Neptune, Uranus in the 13th harmonic. So I would, this, it's, this goes to the, the spiritual stuff. Sun, Uranus, Neptune. Uranus, Neptune is deeply spiritual. It's shamanic energy. It's, it's uh, so I think that we might see collectively a lot of religious or spiritual leaders and or cult leaders in the four this week, but perhaps simulated by this energy on Tuesday. And what else do we've got? We've got a lot of lunar north node action in the harmonics, et cetera, um, as well. I think this, this, this energy on Tuesday, we're really going to hear what people are really ultimately to their soul, to the depths of their core, core committed to. The 13th harmonic singularity and uniqueness, it sounds really beautiful, and it is in a lot of ways, but it doesn't compromise. So on Tuesday and throughout their week, resolve is an issue. There is their 13th harmonic, I call it the harmonic of gurus and gangsters. There's a few reasons why. Because literally research subjects are typically gurus or gangsters with the 13th harmonic. But if you think about a guru and a gangster, there's a lot of things that they have in common. One thing is anti-mainstream, creating your own rules, doing things outside of the box according to how you want to execute them. So this is not a, that's why I was talking about this week being bizarro world. This is not a commodified week. This is not a week of, if, I think, and it's fascinating, right? Because harmonics are interesting. Eighth harmonic is commodity. It's general. It's something that you can reproduce all the time. Ninth harmonic is everything. It's the minority and the majority because ninth harmonic connects all that is. It's, it's the ultimate connection force. The 13th harmonic, however, is it's going to be the minority. It's, the, it's like the 4% the of reality that rubs things a certain way. That's a, I don't want to say fringe because it relegates people to fringe or whatever, but it's the thing opposes what is readily accepted. That's why it's the minority. That's why, and, and this, is the, this, is the, um, this is the energy of all week. I mean, look at every aspect. 13th harmonic is in everything. So, so there's that. Um, I'm ready to move on to Wednesday, if you'd like. Or is there anything you want to add, Amanda? I mean, too, about what you were saying about the the commonality of gurus and gangsters. And the, also their ability to to sort of rally a group of people around them, right? To To speak about something that motivates action in people whether or not that's a positive or negative thing you know but but just that quality of like and you were talking earlier about the square and how the square actually it creates it creates movement and action and if we didn't have any squares in our life or in our chart or whatever we'd probably just kind of stagnate so that that's what i was saying the only reflection i had when you were speaking million percent and that that's such 
I wrote in my notes for the week for for listeners, if you were interested in this, on a personal level, this 13th Harmonic Week, it's it's a week to focus on purpose, your destiny, how you want to live, and what you're chosen for. The 13th Harmonic, in terms of like galvanizing people and all that kind of stuff, and the gurus and gangsters situation, it recognizes that it is chosen for something. It's chosen. Only it can execute a given path. Only it can, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why gurus and gangsters in this whole leadership thing, the figureheads of movements, how they keep coming out this week, et cetera, on a personal and collective level, they're so 13. Exactly to your points too, Amanda. Okay, so purpose, destiny, and what you're chosen for. Only the thing that only you can execute. I love that. Okay, so keeping that in mind as we navigate the week. Yes, keeping that in mind. So we're entering Wednesday, August 9th. That's the Venus retrograde square Uranus. And so this, I love this day because it's like, wow, you really felt that way? It's those type of surprises that just kind of come out. And this is also the benefit of a retrograde period because retrograde, I'm a tarot diviner and retrogrades remind me a lot of reversed cards in tarot where there are so, the reverse cards in tarot, there's a litany of things that it could refer to, a thing that hasn't happened yet, the past, other parties that are shadow card, blah, blah, blah. Like the list goes on and on. Retrogrades in uh, astrology are kind of similar in that capacity because it flips perspectives. So retrogrades could mean that things are decaying. They're not in their normal, most powerful form, but it also is. And retrogrades are also opportunities to flip perspectives because if they were in, if they were going, it's almost like planets in their direct motion are more predictable. Let's say it like that. So Venus retrograde, it's not necessarily like the beauty in the world is dying. It's it's sources of beauty that you would have never seen had it been and just going direct the entire time. So that kind of contributes a lot, I think, to this Venus retrograde beyond the, uh, or excuse me, this aspect today, Venus square Uranus on the ninth, uh, beyond the, the harmonics that are active as well. This is a really sumptuous energy. This is a really sumptuous, like it's chefs, textile designers, designers of any kind, artists of any kind. I would be surprised as well if this week some crazy hidden relics from like Babylon or Africa or, you know, some really ancient place just was discovered, just came out of the forts. That That's how amazing this energy is and and also how it feels on a collective and potentially personal level so it's like we've got today on the ninth we've got major revelations exciting mysteries these these relics of beauty that are coming up and this leads us to thursday which obviously once again there's no transit to transit aspect but the 13th harmonic is the only thing going on today it's 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 another day to be like, what the heck? How awesome is this? I've never, ever, ever would have imagined. That. So that's Thursday. Entering Friday, also a lot of 13th harmonic energy. But Friday, I think is, it could be kind of a little bit nebulous emotionally. So everything's feeling good. You know, generally, um, there there could be some hiccups or whatever, just natural course of life leading up to Friday. But but Friday the eleventh is gonna be kind of like a moment where we ask ourselves, "Is this real? Like, is this legit?" I feel like one thing collectively, just on a personal level, that we could it's the space that we could provide ourselves this week. It's to not feel forced to make long-term decisions. 
It's a 13th harmonic week. It's more of a revelatory and sensory stimulation experience. Like, allow this week to inspire, not necessarily build and erect a kingdom around or whatever. Just let hear people out. So feel how you're feeling. Navigate that. Like, just, just, just be there. And see how it connects to your purpose. Like you don't have to, don't feel pressured to figure things out. If you want to be crazy and imaginative on Friday, fine. That's perfect. You don't have to necessarily do anything with that. Got Mercury on the lunar north node in the 13th harmonic. 13th harmonic in uh, lunar north node is extremely eccentric lifestyles. So we're going to hear about the lifestyle. Let me let me share something else with you about the 13th harmonic. It's it's out of the box distinctive style. And so you meet people who do things like that, which is like nobody does that, right? So you you meet people where nobody does that but you and them. Nobody does that, but it's it's outside of the collective, but it exists. It might be sad. Absolutely. Yes. And so what I'm thinking about is how this week, well, something that you said earlier, you said, don't feel forced to make long-term decisions. So this week is more about experiencing what and who is coming into your life and just practicing enjoying it not feeling like you have it's like you have to hold on to it or you have to like somehow create structure around it it's just there to enjoy and appreciate I was wondering about that too because you said it's a highly romantic week so I was thinking about people who might meet someone who also said it's fate and destiny and that there's going to be these interesting people coming into our lives and but it's also being as retrograde So is this a time where if someone comes into your life that you're like, oh my God, that person is amazing. Oh, wow, I'm doing very like unique things with that person that I don't do with anyone else and all these different things that you're saying are possibilities. Are you also saying that probably this isn't a long-term sort of thing that if someone is coming into your life in this moment that they're coming for a reason, there's something very distinct about that reason. It's probably a part of your life path and purpose, but it might not be like the happily ever after thing that we have in our heads. Yeah, absolutely, Amanda. I wouldn't focus so much on the curse this week. I would focus on the spiritual insights and the resolve and how it elucidates what you're chosen for. I get it because one of my favorite long-term astrologers who I've been reading for 30 years and I got to work with her and I am her loca. Mystic Medusa, she created this. Uh, well, her lexicon is amazing, and she's incredible. One of her her phrases is "love zombie," where it's like you fall in love, you become this love zombie. So we have the potential to become a love zombie this week, but it's not about that. According to the harmonics, like it's more about gaining us back in touch with our uniqueness, what we're really here for, and what our souls are crying out for. Not necessarily the individual that we're partaking with. Wow, that's really cool. Thank you for all that clarification. So that's Friday. Are we moving on to Saturday? Yep. So Saturday, we've got Saturn in the sky is opposing the sun mars midpoint so actually that feels very virgo like saturday feels very what we would consider in modern astrology virgo where it's like okay we're doing tasks etc because we've also got venus um conjunct saturn in the 13th harmonic and uranus opposing mercury pluto so there's a lot of like things that need to be said they think it's totally different from most of the energy from the rest of the week where it's like, OK, like what's actually going on here? It's more about like Saturday, I would just I would build a task list. And it, it's also so as we're getting into the highs and the treasures and the glories of, of most of the week 
and a little bit like Friday and like crazy. <laughs> you know, so like so Saturday is going to be the time where you get to integrate things into reality in a way that's like, okay, actually, this is palatable. Actually, this is, you know, step by step task, what I what I should be doing with this. Um, I think Saturday is also going to be concrete change where it's like, okay, I really see how this is all fitting into the natural course of my day. I wake up at seven. Well, I'm going to do this now. Or, you know, I got inspired by this. Well, guess what? I want to change up what I'm doing to, to house this and be able to do this more often. That's Saturday. And then we get to Sunday, which is the final day of, or not the final day. It's like literally the, the second other day of the week where we actually have a transit to transit aspect, uh, which is that sun conjunctive Venus retrograde. And so on Sunday, Venus, first of all, just in a natal trip, sun Venus is a person who is glowing and beautiful and attractive to everybody. Doesn't matter what they look like, doesn't matter what their features are. So this is a day where a lot of, and this comes out to the personalities um, and the characters that just emerge and the heroes and anti-heroes. We're going to see a lot of that really kind of tipping in uh, on the Sunday. We've also got Mercury, Pluto, uh, Mercury, Venus. And Sunday is very much... I'm going to translate my slang. It's like a stunting day where you stud, where you come out and it's like, we're going to strut our stuff. That's stunning, right? Like, so it's a, it's a type of day where I think we can have very bombastic dialogue. But the thing about this day is that there's... Love this. This is really inspiring. There's a lot of concrete things to work from. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, as garish as a person might be today, that we can pull. And uh, I, think, I think collectively at these final two days of the week that are kind of different from the rest of the week, it's the time. It's like we're we're using this inspiration and we're starting to think about how we're going to change our nature to live with it on a more everyday, mundane level. Does that make sense? I feel like maybe that's a little... Yes. And I'm wondering how it kind of integrates with, with what we were saying earlier, which was that some of the inspiration or the things that we're experiencing this week, they're not necessarily meant to be long-term. Like they, they're mm -hmm. not necessarily meant to like build a kingdom around. But yep. what I'm hearing you say now is that there are going to be potentially some, some things that were inspired by this week that we then decide we want to create structure and, and like more mundane to-do lists around how we can have more of it in our life. Yeah, exactly. So the weekend, it gets to this thing where it's like, okay, I was inspired by this. I'm cutting it out. Like, so it's not necessary. We're not even necessarily thinking long term. It's such that it's, it's almost more immediate, Amanda, where it's like, okay, I met this person. Um, this creative project came back. This source of inspiration is here. It's lighting me up. I'm finally over that. You know what I mean? It's like, whether or not it continues long term, you start to make choices and decisions over the weekend where it's just like, okay, I'm just cutting it now out now. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. It's, it's, we're having an experience, a taste of something. That taste of something is inspiring us to let go potentially of things that, that are holding us back from having that kind of experience more often. Doesn't have to be the exact thing, but it's like the the flavor of it, the the aliveness of it that we want to continue in our life. Exactly, and it's like you know you you experience this flavor, this aliveness, and it's almost. I think another way to to potentially connect with it is it's like it's like you have this experience, you feel this energy, 
and just automatically something else gets cut off. Just uh, it's just not natural anymore. It doesn't even matter if it's short term or long term. It's just the on the you know the weekend we're just like okay I'm done with that. Well, I don't care if it lasts or if it's whatever. It's just gone. Like it's that kind of reorientation. And I think this is an interesting week because of the 13th harmonic and the fact that we're in between moons. I'm still learning about it, but I'm very much. I think moon phases are on point. They just straight up work. So we don't have a new moon until next week. So we're in an in-between week where it's just like we're kind of more, we're tapping into this profundity and these revelations that we didn't expect, this, this soulful depth, and we might be making adjustments but really kind of like uh, whether things last and the future energy and all that kind of stuff, it's like it, there's still a story to be told. Let's say it like that. But we're finally getting to this point of 13th harmonic, gurus and gangsters, all that kind of stuff, the resolve, the profundity, the fate, what you're chosen for, the destiny, all that kind of stuff. It, as an energy, it can't compromise with things that are past due, past their, you know, it just, it goes like it's over. It, it always makes me think, you know, the times where we struggle with certain things in our life, it's like, there will be a time when this is just easy, when, when letting go of this is just easy. And sometimes it's waiting for that. Like I have to think about like double Dutch, you know, the, the jump break where you have to just like wait for that moment to, to get in and start jumping. And if you go too early or you go too late, you get your, your feet all twisted and tangled in the ropes. So I, I love what you're saying. And I'm, I'm sure that people can think of examples in their own lives at those times where it's just like, oh, wow, that just like fell away. Like I struggled with that forever. And then it just fell away. That's amazing. And it sounds like that, that sort of experience will be available to us this week based on the things that we're experiencing through the week. Again, like it's a, I, I often think of it as uh, also like vibration. Like if we mm-hmm. be sort of are existing in a certain vibratory field, certain things fall away when we're at that consciousness level or vibra- vibration. There's just, there's no room for that anymore. And so it's easier to let go of things because they just, they don't, they don't, there's no coherence between that thing and who you're becoming. Yeah, exactly. And this, and the joy of this week, that process comes from inspiration. It comes mm-hmm. from romance. It comes from these things that are hidden that just get come out to the fore. And it's like, okay, now, now naturally, vibrationally, you know, due to these, these joyous, more joyous, more creative impetuses, now that's that's going to be the lead off and the kickoff for naturally reorganizing what you've got going on. Yeah, mm. I love it. OK, so Clarissa, just in summary, some of the high level things. Again, we have this romantic theme, singular incidents or once in a lifetime events, lots of inspiration and aesthetic gold mine. If you artists out there or any kind of art, like don't think of that as only like old painters writers and stuff like our life is art right so aesthetic gold mine faded directions it's a deep week it's not a surface level like there's going to be a lot of opportunity for deep diving uh revolution revolutionary figureheads religious and spiritual themes we have this 13th harmonic which is dominant throughout the week which is everything is unique we have Wednesday as the peak of energy. It sounds like like Wednesday's the one to keep your eye on. It's a Venus dominant week. Okay, one of the things that you highlighted about Tuesday was that we're going to have an opportunity to hear what people are actually committed to. So pay attention to what people are saying. Pay attention to what people are doing. That will give you insights into what they're actually committed to. And this is also within yourself. And... Big, huge purpose week, destiny week. Friday, you may be questioning if you're crazy. Don't worry about it. It's just the energy of the day. And then Saturday, we're taking all this and we're, we're starting to make things real. Step-by-step tasks, concrete energy, 
Um, and then the ability to let things go, which is awesome. And you said, let them go. Enjoy. Like not through struggle. Really cool. If you want to get any, even more insights on how this energy this week is impacting you personally, if you like listen to this, you're like, okay, that's great. I can't, I get it. But like, how is this going to be showing up for me? Or, or if you needing some insight on how to work with the astrology this week and or in general, Clarissa's amazing with readings. She's incredible. We continually get feedback from her clients, people that have readings with her. Just like, oh my God, Clarissa blew my mind. Looking at my chart from a harmonic perspective just brought it to an entirely different level. I've never had these kinds of insights before. So if you're interested in doing that, Clarissa is available on our platform, Astrology Connect. You go, you can go to astrologyhub.com slash Clarissa Connect. Or if you're just interested in booking a reading with any of our amazing astrologers, you can check them all out at astrologyhub.com slash connect. And we'll put those links in the show notes. Anything else you want to say in summary, Clarissa, as we sail off into the week ahead? Yeah, and I just want to thank you, Amanda, and thank you all for listening as per usual. And this is a really beautiful week to transcend mediocrity and really step into how your soul is authentically designed. So I'm really looking forward to all the the beautiful madness that will ensue all these characters all these people including you you know you as part of the pool of this and i'm just excited thank you thank you for that i mean what an incredible moment in time and and i we just recently did a podcast episode with adam gainsburg where we were also talking about similar themes it seems like there's a lot of energy behind this you know really like busting through some of these barriers and and like really getting aligned on your path and saying goodbye to the things that have been holding you back and the storylines and the habits and the things that just aren't aligned with who you are and why you're here right now and what you came to express and be and do. So that's exciting. I love it. Thank you, Clarissa, for being such an incredible translator of this language and just always so uh, inspiring and inspired and passionate. I love the way that you show up. And I'm just so grateful that we get to be together, you and I, and then share with all of our friends here at Astrology Hub. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And have a wonderful week, everybody. It's been so great to be here with you. Thank you for being a part of our community. Thank you for making astrology a part of your life. And I cannot wait to catch you on the next episode. Have fun this week. Enjoy. And we'll see you next week. Take care, everybody.